Grids and flex sections give structure to your section. They allow you to align content and arrange content and control how it shuffles through different device layouts. So I'm going to add a blank section here, a flex section, and just click the top one and save. And now you can see we have a blank section and there is a grid. On the layers panel, it shows grid. Now the grid can be customized on the right side to be any number of columns and rows you'd like. So we have a four column grid here. Let's go down to three column. And we can of course adjust this using the customized layout options here. And let's just bump up the gap between those columns to 20. Okay, below that we have full bleed. So that means the content's going to span the full width. I'm going to turn that off so our content will be limited to a specific size. And you can see on the question mark, it says when turned off, content width is limited to 1200 pixels. Below that, we have a minimum size for the grid. Right now it's 546, I'm okay with that. Okay, so what's a grid used for? Essentially grids are just structure elements. When you place content within the grid, you generally want it to be within another type of container. That's what flex boxes and containers are for. And we'll dig deep into those two items in our next video. So within our grid here, usually what we're going to do is click add and we will add a flex element, a container or a vertical or horizontal flex box. Now, one thing to note is you can actually add widgets or items directly to a grid and move them around as needed. But I don't recommend doing this. And the reason is because it's very hard to control how this content kind of all fits together when it's not placed within a kind of parent container. So let's talk about quickly alignment within a grid. So my button right now is in the first column of this grid. And on the right side menu, I have a line. And if I click left, it's going to align to the left side of that column and same for right. But what happens if I have a button spanning two columns within the grid like that? Now, when I click left align, it's going to left align to the left column and right align is going to right align to the right side of the second column. So that's something to be aware of. If you have items that are spanning one of your columns in the grid, your alignment controls are going to change slightly. I recommend you keep your grids as simple as possible. Let's take a quick look at a pre-made section and see what kind of grid they've used. So I'm gonna add a section. Let's select a template, something a little bit complicated like this. Click save there. So you can see that even though we have kind of this complex layout with kind of an image overlapping this one and all of these items, it is still using a three column grid. So just try and keep the grid as simple as you can. And when you click onto the various device breakpoints, you can see that you can alter the way that your grid is working. So on this tablet breakpoint, it's gone down to a two by one grid instead of a three by one grid. And on my mobile device, it's gone down now to a single column grid. So that's the primary job of the grid. You're going to change it per device breakpoint and it's going to stack or change your content within. If you look at this element that's spanning these two columns, if I were to click on it and I were to change the alignment to left, just as I showed on the button in my previous example, it's actually aligning itself to the column that it's pushing into the second column in the middle. Same story for the right side alignment. Whereas this image in the second column, if I left and right align it, it's not going to change because it's just sitting perfectly within that second column. So again, grids are just structure tools to make it easy to arrange your content. Keep them as simple as you can, and you can always add new columns or take columns away as you need. And remember, if you need to select the grid itself, it might be difficult depending on how much content you have already within. So if I go to the layers panel and I select grid, now I can select or change the options specific to that grid. Okay, that's it for grids. Next up, let's take a look at the various containing elements for content, containers and flex boxes.